Talking parenting now, did you ever accuse your parents of having a favourite child? You know you did. And did you ever wonder that, as a parent, you may be inadvertently treating your kids differently depending on their birth order? Joining us today on the Ann Mum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group is psychologist Sarah Chatwin and from The Parenting Place, Jenny Hale. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, let's start with you. Is it true that different qualities are actually attributed to kids depending on their position in the family? Research doesn't support that every firstborn is like this and every second mm. child is like this, but parents do have different perceptions for different children. And, you know, that firstborn comes along and we're new, we're nervous, and parents can be very anxious. And, you know, you set up these kind of expectations, I guess. So, you know, your ordinal position in the family does have an impact. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. And then by the time the third one rolls around, they just spend most of their time in the back car seat. <laughs> it's just something being <laughs> delivered. nothing going on. There. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mum's really relaxed. Um, Jenny, do these perceived qualities affect the way we actually treat our children? Yeah, I think they do. Because of that template, that overlay, we tend to put expectations on the firstborn. Um, the, the baby of the family often is allowed to get away with stuff. The middle child might just glide through and feel a little bit left out. So we, we assume some of those things. And if we were parented that way, we might just carry on in the way that we parent as well. Mm, this is all sounding very familiar, actually. <laughs> um, Sarah, do assumed character traits actually affect us long term? Well, if you say something to yourself long enough, you start mm. believing it. Mm. And therefore, if you're saying things to somebody else, they start believing it too. So as parents, we have this responsibility to be really careful mm. about these perceptions that we have of our children and to perhaps go into each parenting experience, you know, in a new and unique way and just understand that these kids are going to bring their own stuff to the table. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think they can make a difference and the negative ones can be quite damaging. So what do we think? With the older one, we're obviously thinking they, are, they usually do things later than the youngest one, don't they, in life? I mean, that must affect them somehow. Well, we, sometimes we actually push them ahead mm -hmm. and we have higher expectations that they'll do things first and that they'll be more growing up and more responsible as well. So it, it just depends. I think our role really comes down to find out what each child is like. I think we were given that mm. as our job and really discovering what is unique about this child rather than this is how I'm going to treat this child because I think this is what oldest children should be should treated be. like. Yeah. Mm. And there is no research to say that an oldest child should be like this mm. and a middle child child should have an identity crisis. That's a myth. That's yeah. mythology around ordinal position. Then why do we all think it? Because it is quite common, Because I think we talk to our friends and I think that a lot of people have common experiences as yeah. first-time parents. Mm. You know, they are nervous. They do have anxiety. They don't know what to do. So then we talk about our experiences. We find that we have things in common and we say, right, all our firstborns are like that, when really some are not. Yeah. And all, all babies aren't necessarily the one that's spoiled and more nurtured. I was a baby, so I'll have none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the baby in my family. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, Jenny, what do parents need to change, in your opinion? I think they need to be open, you know, throw out the books, I think, on birth order, or, or take an interest in it, um, but basically find out who this child is that you're parenting. And if you've got some issues yourself about firstborns or middle children or whatever, I think you should deal with them, and that's what parenting invites you into. Mm. They really are guinea pigs, though, aren't they, the first child? They are. I mean, I, I have this so fabulous, much. fabulous first child, and they do say in research that if you have a fabulous first child, they can nurture the other ones. I love like that. I like that whole cooperative thing between children. Love your kids and uh, encourage your kids to love each other so that you have this really loving family. Mm. Does that sound too Fair sweetie enough. sweetie? But I love it. It, it yeah, is beautiful. <laughs> one thing I do notice though in my family is that the, the oldest one feels that the youngest one gets to do things much sooner than he did. He said, yeah. I had to wait till I was 13 to get this, but he's got a phone at 11. That's probably a reality and mm. that has a lot to do with technological mm. advances mm. and, and the said. fact that mum and dad are relaxed and yeah. the fact that mum and dad are exhausted by the <laughs> third so child true. try having four you will be really <laughs> exhausted yeah. um, and you know that you know the younger children do seem I would say in the elder children's perceptions get away with more stuff yeah. mm. uh, so Jenny what can parents do to prevent the tension and the favoring of one child over the other 
I think be really careful of it. Sometimes it's natural to just be drawn more, uh, to feel more affectionate or towards one child. They may be like you or not like you, but it's really important not to show favourite mm. favouritism. Or they can be going through an age where they just not. They can be slightly less likable at stages. Yeah, they do. They go through those or you stages. Can just, Honestly, you yeah. can just have some kids that you get on better with. They, you just seem to have an affinity with them. But that doesn't mean that you love the others any less. You do need to find mm. the things that you relate to in your children. And you, and you need to really accentuate the positives mm. that you see in, in your Absolutely. kids because they do have positives, they really do. They have so many positives and sometimes they, and they may not be particularly likeable but they are incredibly lovable at all times. Absolutely. Yeah. And Thank you for joining us today and Unique. Great advice as always on The Coffee Group. Thank Our Coffee you. Group is brought to you by Animum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now if you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, message us on the Cafe Facebook page. One contributor will win this cool ebook from Ann Mum that allows Sweet you... Dreams, Mike. Here's a special bedtime story from... Me. I meant to do a new <laughs> message for this book. You, <laughs> you record your own voice into it, reading the story. Also really great for grandparents as well. Congratulations to Manaina Tiakifari. Thank you for your great topic suggestion. Your ebook is on its way.